Hey folks, welcome back to the channel and uh, I'm going to look at this guy this time. This is the Transformers Generations Voyager class double dealer figure and I, I'm doing it for a couple of reasons because I know that a lot of people are going to say nah, double dealer, whatever. A lot of people will say he was a shelf warmer. Sure he was, but you know I have a couple of things that I want to say about him as it relates to uh, the, the current toy line that's going on and uh, I got some feedback from my recent look at uh, Blitzwing where I explained how to do the shoulder fix um, where some people thought that it was a little too far away, thought that uh, you know it would have been nice if I could show the actual process. Well, I. I hoped to be able to do it with this guy. I can't quite do it, but I am going to show it in a uh, closer up more detail for those who would like to have additional information. Um, and I'll show you more of exactly what it was that I did. You might be able to see it a bit easier on this guy because one of the complaints was that the... How can I put this? It, 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 the purple of Blitzwing made it difficult to see what it was that I was talking about. Hopefully it'll work out a bit better with this guy. So stick around. We're going to uh, use this guy for a couple of, of reasons and we're going to talk about everything to do with the Transformers uh, Generations Double Dealer. Okay folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Dennis Moulton aka Gapod. As always, please check me out everywhere. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Um, check out Machinery Man and the Everything Factor and we're going to talk about Double Dealer. We are going to measure them as we always do even though we're throwing in a few extra things here. Let's get something um, out of the way right away. There's been a lot of talk that this upcoming uh, Megatron mold will be reused to make a Blitzwing and I I don't see the, ne the necessity of it we got a great Blitzwing not that long ago at all a few years ago and yeah okay maybe some people didn't like the way the head worked out because they had too much paint I was lucky I didn't have that maybe they didn't like the way the shoulders worked out because there's an issue there of course that can be fixed I don't like the idea of Blitzwing as uh, a Titan Master uh, whose head comes off because he's not supposed to. But this guy, on the other hand, I say, I say, use that mold, make another Double Dealer. Uh, why? Because Double Dealer is supposed to be a Power Master anyway. As a matter of fact, he's a double Power Master. Give the guy two heads, whatever. Um, traditionally, he was a. ICBM uh, missile launcher truck and you could plug one of the uh, power masters in and it unlocked his uh, I think it was his Autobot uh, robot mode and you plug the other one in um, I think the one that unlocked his Autobot mode by the way was Knock K-N-O-K uh, do you pronounce that Knock is that how you say that I'm gonna say it's Knock uh, his other one, Scar, would unlock a bird form, which I guess is kind of like the plane form here with that angry face. <laughs> um, I see what they were going for here. It was a bit of a departure. Uh, I do like this head better. This is the head that should have been used on Blitzwing as far as I'm concerned. But, yeah, if you want to do an update to the guy uh, and reuse that Megatron mold, I say do another Double Dealer because he kind of fits with the current gimmick. Just my opinion. Maybe you agree, maybe you don't agree, whatever. Just my opinion. But that being said, how did this guy work out? Well, his, his paint apps and his coloring, you know, uh, because he was somebody who wasn't really in the show, we kind of need to base it on his uh, original toy, I guess in his comic book appearances. Uh, overall, I think it worked out pretty good. Overall, this does look like double dealer and I'm going to give his paint apps about an 8. There are certain things different but I'm going to give him about an 8. Now if we throw in 
his alt modes. He's not supposed to be a plane, he's not supposed to be a tank, so that's not really correct. Even though I think they're really cool. That knocks it down. You know, I can see what they were going for with the plane. I see how a tank is like the truck. But it still knocks them to about a 6. So overall, for, you know, paint apps and we'll say style, he's about a 7. He is about a 7. Uh, Poseability, playability. Great as a tank. Uh, I think he's a good plane. In this mode, uh, the head goes, you know, left and right. Uh, not much up and down. The shoulders now, uh, originally they popped out of their joints, but the shoulders now go all the way around again, and same on this side, it goes all the way around, no problem. Um, the biceps have a swivel, they go out to the side, there's a nice 90 degree bend at the elbow, the wrist swivel, no waist articulation, legs way out and back, just like Blitzwing. He has a nice 90 degree knee, even though it's kind of high on the leg, ankle tilt. Uh, honestly, it's... I think I have his feet turned the wrong way. Uh, I think that his pose ability, playability, honestly, is about a nine. Now, if you don't fix the ankle tilt, or sorry, the shoulders, yeah, okay, that really does drop it down and kind of ruin the enjoyment of this guy. Probably drops that to about a six, but outside of a waist swivel and I guess a little limitation on the head, he pretty much has everything that you could ask for. So, that being said, uh, let me try and explain again, closer up, uh, with some more detail, what it was I did to fix his shoulders. Uh, for anybody wondering who kind of didn't get a fill for it from the Blitzwing video. The first thing you're going to have to do is actually unpeg the shoulders and bring the whole thing up and around and unpeg the shoulder and bring the whole thing up and around. You need to have the arms up and out of the way. And you need to have them out of the way for a specific reason. We're going to take the nose cone of the jet and I guess the, the body of Double Deal and bring it forward. So you have them looking like this. Then you twist I guess this piece out of the way and you would take a you know you take a, 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 a small screwdriver and you would remove a screw up here and you would remove a screw up here right uh, and I'll show this closer in a minute you would remove a screw way down here just above his Autobot symbol and you would remove two more screws, one back here and another one back right there. That's five screws that you're removing. Five screws. And I'll see if I can just show this closer now. Let's go well in here. Okay, so you would remove this screw, uh, these two here, here, and over here. Um, you would twist this out of the way. Actually, we'll twist it here, this way out of the way. And you would remove this one up here, and this one over right here. And when you do that, and when you do that, the body does come apart into two halves. And you might freak out a little bit about it, but really, there's no need to freak out about it. It's not a big deal. Um, all of the arm section, the cannon, this whole purple piece back here, all of that stays really intact. Because you're not taking the screws out to remove this. All that stays intact on his back. So you take that off and you're removing, you know, that whole section as one. The front section, that pretty much stays as one. Uh, the only part that you're really going to probably get unnerved with is that the joint uh, that connects his legs here, you're going to end up having that come out. Um, it's not a big deal, it's just a crossbar. You'll end up just laying it back in there when you screw it back together. No big deal. Yes, he comes apart. Is it a big deal? No. Uh, if you lay all your screws out properly and whatnot and, you know, keep your wits about what you're doing, it's not that big a deal. Now. 
once you have them apart, and, and I wish, like I said, I wish I could show you, but this guy has, uh, uh, I will say this, once you do this fix, you're probably never going to get these guys apart again. I have all five screws here, the heads on all five screws have been rounded out, so I can't take them out. Double dealer will never come apart again. Uh, on Blitzwing, I have two of the screws rounded out. Blitzwing is not going to come apart again. I am not interested in trying to fight to get those screws out when the figures work perfectly. So, you would have them apart. Now, once you have them apart, you will need a piece of uh, sandpaper. You don't even need one this big. I have one this big, but uh, you really don't need one that big. And you're going to do a couple of things. And again, I'm going to try and show this up close for uh, those who, who didn't quite see the first time. Um, okay, let's see, let's see how I can do... Ooh, didn't mean for him to fall over. Let's see how I can do here with showing this. Let's bring this all the way in. Okay. Okay. Now you will see going up right here a seam. That seam is where the two body halves meet. Uh, I didn't have to do it with Blitzwing. I did have to do it with Double Dealer where I sanded down the two sides of this seam. And way up here under this circular piece uh, the two halves of the body meet at a 90 degree angle. Um, the piece that comes in from his back is probably going to be at a perfect 90 degree angle. But the piece that it goes into is a little bit rounded. So it doesn't quite fit in as perfectly as it should. You need to basically uh, take the sandpaper and sand that corner into a perfect 90 degree angle so that the two pieces fit together perfectly. But that's not your major culprit and your major problem when it comes to this guy's shoulders. No, no. The major culprit and the major problem, honestly, falls with these circular sections up here. Now, I mentioned earlier and see if I can just roll all this out of the way. There you go. Uh, maybe it's better if I do it this way. You have two circular sections up here. And this little piece at the end of them is connected to the back. In fact, that's what your screws go in to hold the, these top parts together, right? You put the screws in through the little holes and they go into the circular sections here and here. That uh, hopefully makes sense to everybody. Now, if you look really close, you will notice on this guy, um, maybe you'll notice on this guy, that I've started to, uh, you might notice that on this side a bit easier. I sanded it down, uh, especially in right here, to a point where it was almost over sanded. Uh, all I did was when I took the back off, of course these two posts just stick out and I just took the sandpaper and started sanding straight across. I tried to do both of them at once so that I was sanding the same amount off every time. Uh, I would sand a little bit, I'd take the whole back piece, put it on, put these two screws in, I'd test the shoulders to have them come down and go into this... Uh, this is difficult to show. Sorry, I would sand them down with, uh, you know, as one piece so that I was taking the same amount off every time and then I would test the shoulders, bring them in here. Uh, after uh, I would sand them off, I'd bring these two body pieces together, put in these two screws only, not the bottom three, I would just hold that with my hand, push this together as much as you can, screw it in as much as you can, start testing the shoulders. If you're anything like me, you, have, you will have to probably do that two or three times. You're going to have to take it apart two or three times. That's what I had to do. Um, now with this guy, I did that. I sanded them down. I sanded this to the 90 degree and he still didn't quite fit. The reason being because I needed to sand down the two pieces that came together in here a little bit as well. Blitzwing took me about 10 minutes to fix. Double Dealer had tighter screws, so they were a little bit more work to get out, and I did have to actually sand down the side. Double Dealer probably took me about 
15 minutes. All together to fix these two figures and make them absolutely fantastic takes a, a, about a half hour. Now, without taking this guy apart, that is about as clearly as I'm going to be able to show you the, the fix. Uh, but that's exactly what you need to do, folks. You're looking to sand down the seam here. You're looking to sand the 90 degree angle up right here. And trust me, you don't need to do much sanding for that. And then when you get the back off, you take a piece of sandpaper and go across both, uh, get that out of the way, go across both of these at the same time so that you're sanding off the same amount so that they are still uh, flush with each other. When you start to screw everything back together, these three down here, they're going to go in kind of tight anyway, but the two up top, screw those in as tightly as you can possibly get them. Um, anyway, when you have it all done and you put the little bit of work in for about 15 minutes of your time, you can come over here, you can bring that shoulder down, you can come over here and you can bring this shoulder down, and now you have... And now you have shoulders on Double Dealer and Blitzwing that work fantastic. Makes all the difference in the world. Honestly, they were like new figures to me when I got them. Now, I've already shown this transformation, so I'm only going to fly through this super quick just to show a couple things that I didn't uh, when we looked at Blitzwing. And let me adjust this. Uh, a little bit here. Um, yeah, a couple of things that we didn't really look at with Blitzwing. So I'm going to take his sword off. I like his sword a bit better than Blitzwing's to be honest with you. I like the blue and the silver. His gun is the exact same thing. It's just cast in black. Uh, it might have been nice if it was silver, possibly. It's okay. And we're just going to lay those aside. They can store in the backs of his arms in ports here and here. No big deal. Um, We'll put this guy in, uh, I don't know, let's say, let's say tank mode and then let's say plane mode. Um, you'll notice he has no symbols here for Decepticon or Autobot uh, because in this version of him, this is his neutral mode. One vehicle mode is Autobot, one vehicle mode is Decepticon, which I think, I do think that's kind of cool and I see how that harkens back to his original toy. So. We're going to, as I said, go into tank first. Um, the arms, they come up over his head. You straighten them out and they come up over his head. You take these little pieces out over the hands. I will say this, the tolerances on these little pieces on Double Dealer that go out over the hands are a lot looser than they are on Blitzwing. Um, you, when you come down here, you open out the legs, you pull the hips out. And you can see like these legs are on, you know, uh, a cross piece that goes, you know, slotted in. Like I said, when you take this guy apart to do the fix, this is not a big deal, folks. Um, uh, what do I want to do next? Next, I will pull the body out. I will take the arms and unhinge them and bring the whole assembly up around. And I'll show it again over here. You unhinge the arm, you bring it up, and you can see here how the whole assembly turns in, just like that. Uh, you're going to fold the arms in and fold the arms in. You're going to turn these around so that there's a little post on the bottom here. That little post is going to go into a slot right there. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's going to go into a slot right there. So we'll do that next. Actually, I guess we should pull this up out of the way just so it's easier to put his arm into that slot. And of course, I'm trying to to do this now at a little bit of a distance. And you do the same on this side, you're gonna turn the arm on the side and put that little um, post under the arm into the slot. 
if I'm real, real lucky, I will get this lined up and in. Okay, there, there, now they're in. And you fold this down, you fold this down. You take the whole body piece that we had pulled out and you bring it down underneath. Um, I guess, to be fair, you should push the head down and have the canopy section uh, pulled up over here as well. And all that comes up underneath the body. Now, we go to the legs next. You bring them forward and you turn them all the way around. You bring them forward and you can see the difference in the two legs here. You take this one and you turn it all the way around at the, the swivel for the thigh, basically. Um, you need to close up the feet and close up the feet. Open out the tread, if you can do it, there you go. Open out the tread and pull that out, bring it down and bring it all the way up till it tabs in. You also want to make sure that this um, wing piece is down flush. Uh, next, you come on the other side and do the same thing. You pull out the tread, you open out the whole tread, you bring it up, you tab it in, you push the whole wing piece down. You take this little wing piece and you just flatten it out. Now, you're going to bring these legs in on the side of the body. When you do that, they do tab in. Uh, I tried to show it with Blitzwing and it was really difficult. There's a tab here and a tab here. Um, and on the body, there's a little blue tab here and a little blue tab here. Uh, the little blue tabs go into slots on the treads and this blue tab up on the leg will go into a little gray slot upright here. If you can do it, I'm not going to lie, it is tricky to fit it in there. Um, real tricky to fit it in there. It, it's great when it actually locks, but getting it to lock, uh, that can be rough. Although I, I did okay then. I did all right. Okay. And you come around to the front and there's a little black skirt piece right here that comes up. And a little, on the other side, there's a little black skirt piece over here that comes up. Those little skirt pieces are tougher uh, on this guy than they are on Blitzwing. And in the end, boom, there you go. You have double dealer or Blitzwing, if you will, uh, whichever one, you know, whichever mode you have in his tank mode. I think it's a pretty cool tank mode, to be honest with you. Is it perfect? Maybe that one's not quite in. Uh, is it a perfect tank mode? No, probably not, but I think it looks, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, now, just really quickly, the weapons can store here. Um, you really have options as to where you store them. Personally, for me, I tend to just put the sword here on the side, and I tend to put the gun here on this side. Uh, but, I mean, you could just as easily put both of them up on the, the top up here, for example, if, you know, if you wanted to, you could, you know, you could do like that, no problem. Um, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, honestly, I, I dig it. I, I really do. I think it was a cool, uh, tank mode. And I like the fact that, you know, assuming at least... Did I make the same mistake here of not having the landing gear now? I should point this out. This landing gear right here, right here. If that landing gear is down, you're not gonna be able to swivel the turret of the tank. So you put the landing gear up and now you can swivel the turret all the way around if you are so inclined. Um, I guess I'll adjust those little 
back wings. You know, it, it, it's a beautiful thing, I think. I think it's great. Um, now, he has one more mode, and that one from here is actually pretty easy to get into. We take the legs all the way out, and if we, can I tab this one, all the way out. And we'll just leave them out for now. We're gonna come back up here and we're going to pick up the two little wing pieces. We're gonna take this piece all the way back and we're going to take the nose piece out. And it looks like he's all kinda, kinda exploded-y apart. You take the arms and you wanna peg them. And now you turn them so that the hands are facing down. Instead of the hands facing the center where the turret was, now the hands face down. And there's another little tab up right here that goes into that same slot that we just used. You bring the cockpit all the way up and around. And just like with Blitzwing, you need to get this little piece, this little blue piece here with the divot in it, up underneath the canopy and it's a bit easier with this guy because the head is smaller so it's actually easier uh, I find to usually anyway I usually find it's easier to get that nose cone piece up there now you have to bring down if you didn't already uh, Maybe I should bring this forward to show this. Uh, I just had, uh, I guess, an issue happen. I had this little black piece pop off. That was my own fault. That wasn't anything to do with the figure. It's because I flipped up the nose piece before I flipped these down. Once I brought up the legs, I should have pushed these in right away, and I didn't. Now you bring that nose cone all the way up around, and I guess you can bring out the landing gear if you are so inclined. Uh, the legs are what we need to deal with next, and we collapse them again now, uh, just like we would for robot mode. Next we undo the tread, and we close it up. We undo this tread, and we close it up, and we push it in, and we push it in, and that pushes out his wings. You start to take the legs back, and you should be able to get an idea of how this is gonna go now. You swivel the legs so that the wing is facing out. You swivel the legs so that the wing is facing out. Uh, this foot here, you bring it over to the side, and you turn the uh, wing piece back. You bring it over to the side, turn the wing piece back. Take out this wing, and take out this wing. In behind, you will see another little, kind of a floating piece, and that comes down. Uh, it fills out the wings a little bit. You push the wings in on the side, um, and when you push them in, they will lock into position. They basically lock in there on their own, um, or at least mine, mine do, and boom, in the end, uh, there you go, you have a plane. Uh, this is, you know, this is how he should look from a top-down view. This is the front view, side, uh, and bottom view. Again, if you wanted to, you could do as I like to do, and, uh, Stick the Of course this does not want to cooperate right now on camera. You can stick the sword in that way. I hate that, but the idea that I had, and that I like to do, is there you go, stick it in that way, and it covers in kind of the gappiness uh, between the two arms here in the body of the jet, and you can take the gun, um, his blaster, and stick it up there as a, I guess like a, a kind of a cannon over the, you know, over the plane. I, the plane is probably his weakest mode, but I still think that there's something about it that looks really cool. 
I dig it. I like it. I don't know if you do. But yeah, if we're going to get an update, don't give us another Blitzwing. Give us an updated double dealer with the Titan Master gimmick. Why not? It works perfect for this guy. Uh, his transformation, it, it's okay. It's all right. It has its fiddly points. It's probably about a seven. Uh, overall, his pose ability, play ability is what brings him up. Uh, where that's a nine now because of the shoulder fix. Overall, I would say that that double dealer is about a seven, seven and a half. A little bit better than average. Uh, if we didn't have the shoulders done, I would be telling you that he's about a six, five and a half or a six. Um, yeah, I wasn't overly excited for this guy. I really got him to kind of fill out the Decepticon ranks a little bit, but uh, I do dig what they're going for, and I get, I get it. They, they have a plane with a mouth on it. It's supposed to be like his bird. The tank is supposed to be like the truck. I get what they were going for. I see the inspiration, and that makes sense. Do I think it's a definitive double dealer? No, probably not. But it is pretty good for, really, I think, more of a fringe character. Anyway, that's it. I hope, I hope that the extra detail helps you out. Uh, we've looked at everything now, Blitzwing, everything double dealer. And uh, like I said, hopefully it, it helps you to improve these guys in your collection and make you enjoy them immensely, immensely more. I know I certainly do. Anyway, thanks for giving me a bit of your time. As always, uh, I look forward to the next time that you and I get together for another visit right here inside the videos.